and welcome to Book Days. Today's adventure has brought us to the Wesley Lane Llama Farm. We are so excited. Today is all about llamas. Let's read our book. The book of the day is Llama Llama Red Pajama by Anna Dooney. So today's book day adventure has brought us to the Leslie Lane Llama Farm. And I'm so excited I'm here with owner Susan. Thank you so much for having us today. You're welcome. You're very welcome. This is such a joy. I did not even know there was a llama farm here in Texas. <laughs> and I will let you just tell us about the farm. How did you get in to llamas? Uh, so we started out with a horse farm. Mm -hmm. And once we got our first two llamas, we got them to protect the uh, horses from coyotes and to eat the weeds that were growing in the horse pasture. Wow. So we had our first baby about 13 months later and never got another horse, just kept breeding the llamas. Aww, and I love, you have a ton of llamas. How many llamas do you have here on your farm? We have about 60 here right now. 60 llamas, that is crazy. <laughs> and my favorites are the babies. So shall we show the kids the babies? Sure, absolutely. Awesome. So this way? Yep. So the first one here is Tori. <laughs> Close up of Tori. Close up of Tori. You sure. and, and you had mentioned that this is kind of like the preschool. This is our preschool pen, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Oh my goodness, and Tori likes my jacket. Tori likes jacket. <laughs> Tori likes cords. Tori likes hair. Yes. Okay, let's go find your friends. Come, Come on, on, let's go find your friends. Come on, Tori. <gasps> Look, it's some of your friends, Tori. There they are. Aw, this is so awesome. So what does it take to take care of, especially baby llamas? Uh, they need a safe, secure area. They need their moms with them. Um, the babies nurse from their moms for six months, and it's the moms that protect the babies. So we've got a couple moms with their babies and we have a couple babies that are already weaned from their moms. So here we have a mom and baby combination. You can see the colors. Come here, Falcor. So beautiful. Here they come. There you go. There you go. And so how long do these llamas stay here in the preschool? So they'll stay here in the preschool uh, until spring comes, um, which will be end of February, early March. So then they won't need the barn for so much protection on the super cold nights where we go below freezing. Sure. And then they'll get a bigger area where they can run and start gaining their independence as they start being weaned from their moms. Aw, that is precious. What do these llamas eat? Primarily they eat grass and um, hay. Um, they get their grain for those that are already starting to eat their grain. Um, the babies 100% are on their mom's milk and then gradually work into the hay and the grain. Oh, yeah. very nice. So it's kind of like kids in a way. They start kind of with like the... like kids. They start with work mom, up. work their way into some baby food, <laughs> some soft... Yes, absolutely. So how old are these? So these are what we consider our kindergarten pen. Um, these boys have already been weaned from mom. So these are the boys that are nine, ten months old. They won't be a year old till later this spring. <laughs> and can you tell me which one's the leader of this group? Which one is that? <laughs> the leader of the group is this bigger one. Uh, the other two have proclaimed him leader. He is not self-proclaimed leader. So he doesn't have a big head about it, but the other two definitely follow him. So what's your routine of taking care of them on a daily basis? Um, daily basis, they have pasture, they have hay, they have waters. Every barn um, has shelter so they can get it out of the rain, out of the wind. They have a catch pen, so if we need to catch somebody, we take them in the barn, close the gate. Um, we don't chase our animals here. Um, chasing them gives them the wrong feeling about humans. We never want them to fear humans. Yeah. We want them to respect us. Um, so they all have their catch pens, their automatic water. So on a daily basis, um, they get their grain every day. They have free access to their pasture and their hay and their water. Um, we monitor everybody, make sure nobody's, you know, there's nobody stuck in fences. Yeah. Nobody's got any cuts, um, anything, you know, like that that's happened to them. Some of them love selfies and they just get right up in the camera. And 
So Susan, can you talk a little bit about what it takes for these llamas to be healthy? I know the kids, they go to their well checks with their doctors. What does it take for a llama to stay healthy? Um, so we kind of do the same thing with the llamas. We do their once a month wellness checks. Mm -hmm. um, we do their body score. We check their eye membranes to make sure that no one's um, got any anemia going on. Um, when we body score them, we make sure that nobody's getting too thin. Um, we do fecal checks on them to make sure that they don't have an excess of stomach parasites. Um, stomach parasites in all livestock is just what it is because they're eating grass, but we like to keep those numbers super low because the parasites will take them off feed, which will cause them to get thin. Some parasites will cause them to get anemia, and that's when we have problems. Oh, so, no. so we check them um, constantly. Like I said, we do a once a month wellness check on every single llama on the property. Wow, so it's like they have to go to the doctor like once once a month. No, it's like going <laughs> to the doctor once a month, except we do it here. They don't have to travel to the doctor. Correct. That's awesome. Correct. And then if we find something that we don't like or we're not comfortable with that situation, mm -hmm. then we absolutely bring the vets involved. I know some of our viewers might be thinking about llamas and their spitting. How often is that true? Um, well, like you've seen here today, <laughs> uh, the spitting is generally... Um, a means of protection. So mm -hmm. like where a dog would growl or bite, oh. that's when a llama would spit. So they do it, so if a, if a stray dog or coyote were to run in here, the dominant llamas are gonna chase that dog or coyote, they're gonna spit at that coyote mm -hmm. um, to chase them away. That way the coyote can't hurt their babies or their family. Oh. But if we're not hurting them, they mm -hmm. don't feel threatened by us. There's no reason for a dog to bite if it's not being threatened. So there's no reason for a llama to spit if it's not feeling threatened. Oh, that's so I feel like spitting, <laughs> uh, you know, llamas get a bad rap for yes. the spitting yes. when it's really they're just protecting their family. Oh, yeah. that is very good to know. And I see some more llamas down there. Shall we go say hello? Sure. Awesome. Sure. They're checking me out. They're checking you out. See if you're friend or foe. When they put their ears like that, what does that mean? What's the matter? What's the matter, Freedom? Huh? Just checking things out. See, mm -hmm. now he's had a chance to sniff me, and then his ears go up. Okay. He's a good boy. Who's a good boy, Freedom? No. Ears up. Ears up. Come on. Ears up. Be a good boy and put your ears up. See, he's still kind of cautious about that new boy right there. Mm -hmm. So when they that nose goes up, they're starting to show dominance, so the ears go back. What do you think? So, see, he's chewing. He's chewing his cud. Because he's not so sure about that boy right now. So by chewing that cud, he's kind of regurgitating some of that stomach acid. Okay. So that if that llama were to come over here and show dominance over him, He's going to get spit at. Yeah. I also noticed that you had some alpacas on we here. We do have some alpacas as well. They're kind of cousins to the llamas, okay. like different breeds of mm -hmm. dogs. We have different breeds of camelids. So yeah. llamas, alpacas, vicuna, and guanaco are the four um, llama species. Yeah. So they're just like different breeds of dogs, cousins. And so is the alpaca um, for softer than a llama or does it? It's different. Different. It's different. So pound for pound, if you sheared an alpaca and you sheared a llama, you are going to get a bigger volume off of the alpaca, even though the alpaca might be half the size of the llama. Mm -hmm. The density, the thickness, the length of the alpaca fiber is way increased. So if you're looking for fiber production, alpacas is 100% the way to go because they produce so much more. Um, they're smaller, so they're um, less money on the feed bill. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it's a better business practice. Yeah. You have less expenses, but you get more volume of product. And we felt them and they were so soft. So, so soft. soft. And so, so soft. yes, yes. Now that doesn't mean that the llama's fiber oh. is not as soft or as fine. Um, it's just far less, 
far less. The alpacas primarily come in more solid color mm -hmm. fiber. So when you're processing your yarns or your products, you have a lot, you know, you can separate it into your whites, your fawns, your creams. Whereas a lot of the llamas you'll see here on the property are multi. Yes. So trying to put their fiber color with color is a whole lot more difficult. Because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to share, well, we're going to share this black spot <laughs> and this white spot. No. So we do a lot of individual processing uh -huh. of our fibers. Um, and so we'll have yarn from this llama and his yarn will be labeled with Freedom's name or Banner's name or Luna's name. And it it's fun for the people that come here because they're like, oh, do you have a rug from Freedom? Or do you have yarn from That's Jasmine? That's really cool. And, you know, so people pick their favorite animals and then they love the products that come from them. And it's nothing more than a haircut. So no harm ever comes to a single animal on our property. It's nothing more than giving them a haircut, okay. which they have to have in Texas. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah. Without a haircut in Texas, <laughs> they're not going to last many seasons that way. So we're actually helping them stay healthier and happier by giving them their haircuts. Plus, we make amazing products from their wool. Maleficent! Come here, Mel! Come here, Snow. Hi, Abby. Abby. Here they come. Aww. Okay, so this black girl with the white marbled face, that's my first baby. Aww. That's Miss Ebony. She is the reason that I do what I do. This was our first baby. Right? Right, Mama? So now we like to get our moms where they're comfortable around us. Mm -hmm. They get to where they understand that we're just here to help them. Yes. They don't want to be messed with. They're not dogs. They don't like their faces touched. You can't just pet on them. They're very stoic, very regal. Have a, they've been social distancing long before. <laughs> social distancing was a thing. They're kind of like cats. Like cats very much like, like cats. Cats love you. Kind of like, okay, that's enough. I'm going now. So. Exactly okay. like a cat. Exactly <laughs> like a cat. Correct. And everything, you know, some are way more, some are way less. They all have their moments. Personality. Super, super personalities. Like Tori. Like Tori. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <Not much> Tori. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us for this book day adventure. Susan, thank you so much for having us. You're very welcome. And don't forget to subscribe to join us on all our upcoming adventures. We'll see you soon. <laughs>